in on one thing specific that I'm suggesting here, and that's with the stimulus package. Alaskans have heard me talk a lot about this. You've got to ask yourself, what is this all about? The process, even, of creating this stimulus package with Congress being expected to vote on it without even knowing what was in it. The conservatives and Republicans in Congress, they, they looked at this debt-ridden, gargantuan government growth plan, and they voted against it. They didn't like it. They warned states that there were fat, fat strings attached to these dollars. And there were strings. There are strings. Because that's inherent in federal spending. That's the nature of the beast. Of course there are strings attached. And so there were lots of warnings that were given to all the states that, hey, unless your state is ready to chuck the Tenth Amendment and you're going to hand over willingly more power, control the big centralized government, and to DC politicians who are going to tell you what to do in your state, the warning was, legislatures, be careful with the temptation with the stimulus package dollars. They didn't like it then, but then when a bunch of us local elected officials, we agreed with them. And then though, we started seeing the press releases kind of bragging up the, the bacon that these hundreds of millions and billions of dollars, almost a trillion dollars total, we're gonna bring into our states. The buckets of money, of borrowed money that would pour into the states. Soon the states started being warned, hey, you'd better take the money. If you don't take it, another state's gonna spend it for you. Then what that did, it empowered those who hold states purse strings to resolve to take the money anyway. Even if the public and some governors had grave concerns over growing government, gonna grow government. Legislatures did this via resolutions to take the money and then federal agency interpretations for rules of engagement and how to accept and then uh, spend that money. Those rules kept changing and a lot of confusion ensued. And let's be honest, states were made to really look incompetent, almost unethical, if they were staying consistent and were still saying no to accepting some of those federal funds that don't necessarily stimulate the economy and create private sector jobs as it was being fed to us as. These are short-term, expectation-building, new bureaucratic growth spurts. And legislatures ended up resolving to take the money, which was contributing to more dizzying national debt. The mixed messages then, and the confusion, and now frustration, disenchantment, with the disenchantment from our own government. And look what happened when, here in Alaska, in my administration, I, I vetoed uh, the stimulus package, some of the dollars, with obvious big government strings attached. And shoot, I just about got run out of town by some. Friends, we need to be aware of the creation of a fearful population and of fearful lawmakers being led to believe that big government is the answer. To bail out the private sector because then government gets to get in there and control it. And, mark my words, this is going to happen next, I fear. Bail out next, debt-ridden states. Then government gets to get in there and control and watch what happens there. Michael, maybe you want to talk about your home state, California. We'll see what happens there. But, you know, it's, for the love of God, you've got to ask yourself, where did we get off track? Michael Reagan's going to talk about getting on the right track. He knows, we know here in Alaska, that America is the greatest nation on earth because our foundation is freedom, and it's in God we trust. It's not in big government that we trust.
things here that have so drastically changed these past months, um, some would want to forbid others from speaking up. And it's been through lawsuits, been ethics violation charges, media distortions. By the way, today we won that 14th ethics charge. <laughs> show up at the Iron Dog because it's freezing cold and I'm wearing my warm Arctic cat coat and a charge is levied against me for wearing the logo on the coat. But we won, so that's cool. Yeah. Now, want to tell me, they want to tell you to sit down and shut up. We will not do so. I just can't because I love my state. I love my country. And I need you, we need Michael Reagan, to keep on fighting for our freedoms, for our country. And what we're being fed today, it seems, is a steady diet of selected, misrepresented news. So we need the Reagans of the world today to remind us of truth. Let me ask you, why is it, considering how fast the world is spinning and world-changing events that go on all over the globe that do affect our lives, world-changing events, thousands of them every day, why do you suppose that it's the same big three supposedly competing networks that have virtually the same news content every night with virtually the same exact viewpoint being spewed night after night after night? We've got to ask those questions. So I join you in speaking up and asking the questions and taking action. And here at home, in my beloved Alaska, I just say, politically speaking, if I die, I die. I'll know that I have spoken up, and I will speak up to thank people like Mr. Reagan as we honor his dad, to encourage you too, Alaskans, to do the same. And don't just hang in there and go along to get along, but stand up and speak up and be bold and demand that Washington be prudent with our public monies and prioritize for America's security. And forget the political correctness that makes one guard your conversation and couch our words so cautiously that they lose meaning and then we lose effectiveness and then we lose hope because we start thinking that politicians are only worried about their poll numbers and attracting campaign contributions for their next bid so that they can hold on to some title and some position. No, let's remind them, those who we elect, that we expect them to be bold and so they are to be representing the will of the people, to defend our Constitution and to win our wars. And obviously, me not being, in fact, not many of us here tonight, are in that political, financial, academic, elite center of power. We're not there. And it's kind of refreshing to be outside of that, to tell you the truth. I am just a mom. I'm a proud Alaskan hockey mom and I love my country, and I'm concerned about my kids' future and your kids' future, and because I was raised where it is rugged, and you kinda gotta be tough with dogged determination in order to survive sometimes. Well, not many of us in Alaska are inclined to just sit down and shut up, and I thank Michael Reagan for honoring Alaska, being here tonight, continuing to lead a cause for a better America. Let's hear it for Michael Reagan. Thank you.